Um, joining me now is one of my favorite people. I was going to say he's a national treasure, but I think he's a global treasure because of what he has done um, has affected the truth all over the globe. Edwin Black is his name. He is an award-winning investigative author, author, including 11 books. One of my favorites is uh, IBM and the Holocaust and the War Against the Weak is another one. His work focuses on human rights, organized hate, and the history of genocide, among other topics. His commenta uh, commentary is featured in media around the world, and he hosts the weekly Edwin Black Show. Edwin, long time no see. How are you, sir? It's good to see you now, and I'll see you in a week. Yes, um, I'm excited. Um, the chant of these protesters right outside of the White House, please explain to people what it means when they chant, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. It means genocide. It means exactly what it sounds like. The practice run for that was uh, last Saturday when they uh, uh, went into a uh, strip of Israeli villages and farming communities and slaughtered everybody, murdered them, committed in unspeakable physical and other atrocities, burned everything. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. You have to ask the next question. And so where do the Jews go? Where do you mean? And the answer is they want 9 million to 10 million Jews and their, na and their neighbors into the Mediterranean. So whenever you hear members of Cong Congress or students at Columbia or um, uh, other individuals say from the river to the sea, the qu next question is where do those nine people go? So, so nine million people go. Uh, so, Edwin, tell me, tell me this: these these people are college educated. They can't be stupid. They 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 have surely seen all of the writings from Hamas, the actual words from um, Iran, Hezbollah, IRGC. All of them are saying exactly the same things that Adolf Hitler said, except I think even more transparent. So. What's happening here? That's where you're wrong. Your first error was to say they are educated mm. and they aren't educated. We now see for a reality that the universities in this country are ground zero for genocide, ground zero for hate. It's been that way for every genocide that I've investigated. The campus is the ground zero. Just a couple of days ago, I gave a lecture at one of America's most respected universities. Not one person knew what the Normandy invasion was. Not one person knew what Dresden meant. Is it a city or is it a dessert? Not one person had an understanding of world, of. Of, of World War II. These institutions are now exposed as institutions of lower education. And people need to wake up to the fact that universities have been breeding and continue to breed uneducated, manipul intellectually manipulated in individuals who are being primed for acts of, ha of hatred and persecution against minorities. So there's a couple of things. First, I remember reading a report about a textbook, one that's very popular um, in the United States, um, and I believe even used in Texas, that up until recently did not include Hitler, the Jews, the Holocaust, Poland, Auschwitz, uh, in fact, the only thing that you learned was that the Americans, you didn't even learn about Pearl Harbor, you learned in World War II the Americans bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They added Hitler after uh, complaints, but you don't have any idea what anything was about if, if that's what you're learning. And that's in our high schools and, and elementary schools. It's really a sad disappointment to see the state of higher ed, 
higher education in our in our country now. But people are beginning, just beginning, Glenn, to wake up. The pe- the uh, funders who are withdrawing their portfolios, uh, the uh, uh, the faculty uh, who are starting to coalesce and and rebel against this popular support for genocide. They're just beginning to understand. We have individuals struggling to ramp up new uh, universities. Barry Weiss is uh, working on Mm -hmm. one in uh, Austin, Texas, remote learning. I myself am working with many, many people to to, uh, promote higher education. Higher education doesn't necessarily mean it has to be within the gates of Harvard or of uh, or Columbia. In fact, if one would listen to one of your broadcasts on on eugenics, they would probably learn more from that mm. than in any of the university co- courses that oh, are offered. I, I guarantee that. Uh, I guarantee that. So l- let me take you um, to the fact that um, it was Columbia University that brought Nazis in. Uh, during World War II, and they didn't, it was the same kind of thing that was happening in World War II. I don't think nearly as bad as, and universal as it is now. But um, it, it, Hamas comes from the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood, if I'm not mistaken, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem is one of the, the founders of that, if I'm not mistaken. And the Grand, the Grand Mufti of Israel or, or Jerusalem back in World War II moved to Berlin and was all for the extermination of Jews. So this really is just kind of the next phase. Aren't they very similar, Hamas and the Nazis? You know, it's very sad that um, uh, I've, uh, um, I published a book in uh, 2010 called The Far Hood, yes. Roots of the Arab Nazi Alliance in the Holocaust. I went to the United Nations around the world and I helped establish International Farhood Day to recognize uh, a Arab Nazi pogrom in Baghdad in um, uh, on June 1st of 1941, done in conjunction with the actual Nazis. And these Arabs themselves, of course, adopted Nazism. Uh, they adopted the ideology of, uh, of, of, Hit- of Hitler, the Arab world, um, uh, through the uh, Arab Higher uh, Committee, everywhere mobilized Arabs and Muslims to fight Against the Allies and for and for Hitler, three different um, Nazi SS divisions were stood up by the Arabs: the uh, Kama, the Skanderbeg, and the Han and the Hanshar. They fought mm-hmm. in Central Europe. So uh, when you say that they were in favor, they were more than just in favor. They were part of the international Nazi movement. And when I hear the descriptions of these um, atrocities that were committed, which I've seen the videos of, and I'm afraid you may have also seen those videos, um, it sounds like one of my lectures on the Farhood when people say parents were slaughtered in front of their children and children were slaughtered in front of their parents, that girls were raped in front of their families. This is what I say when I talk about something that happened in 1941 and we see it's happening once again. And uh, it's, it's blood curdling that I predicted this in June. Exactly. Uh, I did a, um, one of the Edwin Black Show episodes with some leading experts uh, on International Farhood Day and said, where could it be next? I say, would it be Tunisia or Morocco or Syria? I said, no, there's two locations where it will probably occur. And that will be one is, is Israel and two, the United States. And we see that while this genocide and this qualifies under the legal definition of genocide, while this genocide that uh, took 
place on the Israeli side of the border on the Jewish holiday of uh, Simchas Torah, while this genocide is over there now, they're prepping it yes. to come to the Western world. You know very well yes. that in front of the Sydney Opera House, mm -hmm. um, uh, the um, Palestinian and Arab protesters were chanting, yes, not free Jews. Palestine, not from the river to the sea. They were chanting over and over again, gas the Jews, gas the Jews, gas the Jews. And I'm really afraid um, that what is about to break out here is something that we have never seen before in our in our lifetime in, 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 in the United States. My parents saw it, and many of your listeners, their uh, parents and grandparents saw it, but it's the reason why I actually have been doing a show, a series, called Kristallnacht 2.0, predicting exactly how this would take place and when it could take place. We're, right. in, we're in a big problem, Glenn. Let me, uh, I'm gonna continue our conversation here in, in a second. By the way, uh, Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, um, killed far, far fewer uh, than last weekend killed. Um, That's what, right. What uh, we're facing was... is, is quite dark. We'll be back in just a second. Edwin Black is here, um, an incredible man. And Edwin also is the um, architect of the steps to a Holocaust. Um, and he has been warning uh, the world, uh, never again, never again, never again, never again. And last time I think we spoke, we had maybe s five or six of the steps. Does this get us closer to a world in which the Holocaust is a reality again? The six steps that you were talking about, and thank you for bringing it up, yeah. and thank you for having me, Glenn. Uh, the six steps you were talking about were the steps that IBM uh, devised for the Third Reich uh, uh, to create a final solution. I outlined these in my book, IBM and the Holocaust. The first step was identification. Well, the Jews are being identified, and I'll explain more in a moment. Uh, the second step is exclusion, which you might call cancel culture. The third step is um, uh, confiscation, then ghettoization, deportation, and then extermination. Now, what has happened? The Jews are being continually identified. And in particular, Iran has been the moving force behind something called the Mapping Project which is worked out of Boston, and they have mapped with connections all the Jewish individuals in the greater Boston area, all the synagogues, all the businessmen, all the pro-Israel people, what? All, all the Hillels. It's called the Mapping Project. It's in Boston? Run, that's right. And it's run out of a, um, out of a, uh, an, Icelandic uh, server that we can't touch that will not respect any kind of um, any kind of uh, international court order to uh, to uh, take it, to take it down. Even though the anti so who is who is the one funding something like this? It's being funded by Iran. Oh. It was worked through some MIT so, students. Uh, I want to get. Well, hang on, just a sec. I want to get. I want to get back to the list, but we're probably going to have to do that next week because we only have five minutes. And you're going to come on next week, and we're going to do a, a podcast together. Um, Iran's fingerprints are clearly over all of this. Our government is doing all kinds of things to fund Iran. Um, Iran, as you know, is. What is it, Gog or it's Magog, I think, and Gog is is uh, Russia, never before um, allied. Christians believe that the end of the uh, world as we know it comes from this big battle. More importantly, I think the Iranians believe this, and they're now talking about a final battle. Is this something that you think is going to? spiral into a, a global war, Edwin? Yes. In fact, Iran has just issued the final of three significant 
uh, warnings to Israel, which is the manner employed by the Prophet Muhammad to give three warnings. Iran has the nuclear bomb. Uh, I uh, revealed the specific design of that bomb in the Times of Israel several years ago. And even the United States military now confirms as of about uh, a month ago that Iran was only two weeks away from a, from a, a deliverable bomb. Uh, it's actually five bombs called the Ahmed Project. And Iran wants to bring about paradise. They want to bring about paradise yes. by with an apocalyptic attack on Israel. And Israel was getting ready, as, as everybody knows, to pick the moment and the hour and the day to attack Iran and destroy um, the, nu the, the nuclear infrastructure. It would take about a three-week war. It's something I've uh, studied uh, uh, intensely. The real threat was peace with Saudi Arabia was about to break mm -hmm. out. So what is it that we should be watching for here? What are the, what are the escalation signs? What are the things that you say, this, if this happens, you know, another big bad step? If, his, if, if Hezbollah um, tries to unload its 100,000 missiles at Israel, which is now overwhelmed with its Iron Dome system, uh, those two carrier groups are going to let go with um, missiles and interceptors. That would be a signal for Iran to do a distraction effort and then possibly, possibly 25% chance deliver on their sworn promise to drop at least one nuclear bomb with a destruction radius of, uh, of eight to 15 miles on, is on Israel, then Israel and the United States would, re would retaliate. Others would come in. I'm telling you right, right now that there is a 25% chance that the worst possible scenario will come to this world. 25% chance. This is an existential threat to Israel, and this is an existential threat to the West, and this is an existential threat to the Jews and the survival, and when the Jews go on Saturday, the Christians are going on Sunday. And this will be the defining moment for civilization or the declining moment. It's up to the world, but what we see on the campuses, what we see in our in our uh, society, where uh, individuals and faculties and 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 departments are taking the side of the most brutal terrorists, people who actually disemboweled pregnant women and left their babies with the umbilical cords still attached. I can't tell you the things that I saw. I'm debating with myself how much I can show on my show t tomorrow, the Edwin Black Show. But uh, this is a defining moment, and, and we need to look at every footfall and see where we are stepping, and we need to keep our eye on, on the ball and not on nonsense. Um, Edwin Black, thank you, my friend. We'll see you next week. I'll be back. All right. Um, I, I, I want to just say a quick word about him. Um, he is a man who has done his homework, checked it twice, uh, and then uh, checked it a third time. He is a remarkable man who has dedicated his life to the study of holocausts and uh, liquidations of people. He's a remarkable hero of mine, Edwin Black. We'll see you tomorrow on radio. Good night.